Is there a holy grail of drumming technique, some kind of force multiplier that can influence literally every single note you play? Why yes, yes there is. It goes by many names, but I'm going to refer to it as the open-close technique. No, it's not just for pipe band drumming. And yes, if you have the patience to work on it, I swear to you, it's going to change your life. Let's get into it. Hey friends, Matt Bell here, and today I'm going to show you how the open-close technique works. This is a drumming technique that I would refer to as a macro technique, so it can be a rudiment on its own, but the real power of the open-close technique is that you can use it within other rudiments, which will let you play with more control, speed, sound quality, and overall groove. I'm using a fairly open grip in both hands to get the most out of this technique. Now yes, this is my pipe band grip specifically, but honestly, it's also pretty much my American rudimental grip, my drum set grip, my concert grip. You get the idea. I really want to drive home the point that your grips and techniques can and should cross over between styles. I know, blasphemer. Now, I've found that over many years of doing this, what I've arrived at is a fairly universal grip and technique that with really minor changes can work for just about anything that I do. As far as a few specifics, my right hand is what would be called American grip, where I don't have my thumb completely on top of the stick, like French grip, or completely on the side like German grip. I'm right between the two, which lets me take advantage of wrist movement for power, but still has a lot of access to the fingers for control. You'll also notice that I have some space between my thumb and the first finger, as well as quite a bit of space and opening at the back of my hand. Now this daylight back here, going through the grip, is something that is not talked about a lot, but it's really important to the mechanics of how the stick moves. Now in my left hand, my thumb is relaxed so that it can lay on the stick, but it's not pressed down hard onto the stick, and my pointer finger drapes lightly over the stick. My middle finger is straight-ish, but it's also really relaxed. Now if you're noticing relaxation as a theme here, you're not wrong. Our, we're aiming to let the stick do the work, and only use muscles to propel the stick in the direction it needs to go and no more. Mostly, we're trying to get out of the way so that the stick can move freely. A good way to know that you're getting out of the way of the stick is to use your ears. If you can hear the pitch of the stick ringing while you're playing, then I think you're on the right track. Let's get into a two-note grouping that my buddy Alex Caldell refers to as Tada. You can check out his video here. Tada is a combination of the basic single strokes, either a rebound stroke followed by a down stroke, or a rebound stroke followed by a second rebound stroke. Which of these variations you use depends on whether or not what's coming after your Tada needs the stick to stay low to the drum. What we're aiming for is two even sounding strokes, even though we're actually using different finger technique to execute each of those strokes. We're going to concentrate for now on the version of Tada, where we're using two rebound strokes. Let's look at the right hand first. On the first stroke, or Ta, we're going to accelerate the stick down into the drum and let our hand open up as the stick rebounds back up off the drum. You're going to want to keep your fingers lightly touching the stick for this move. For the second stroke, or da, you're going to close your fingers back towards your palm, which then snaps the stick back down into the drum. One thing to concentrate on is that both strokes, the ta and the da, come back up to the same height that they started at. The left hand needs a bit more constant motion to work, because you have really little in the way of fingers on the stick to control what's going on. On the ta stroke, you open the hand, with the thumb being the control point. On the da stroke, you close the hand back up. Just like with the right hand, you want to make sure that you have both strokes come back up to the starting position. Now if you want to see this broken down further, I really recommend that you check out Gordy Knudsen's videos on YouTube. I'll have a link right up here. He's a fantastic player, and I love the way he explains the open-close technique. Let's look at four exercises that'll start you working on this technique now. 
For all these exercises, you'll see either a little O or a little cross above some of the notes. The O means open and the cross means close. Also, you'll see that the actual note heads are either below or above the single line. Below the line means left hand and above the line means right hand. All four exercises start at 65 beats per minute and they gradually speed up to 100 BPM and then slow back down gradually to 65 BPM again. They're all about two minutes in length. You notice that they all start on the left hand first cause you know, why not? Most people's left hand's weak so let's just go with that. I've played some Bauron along with the exercises to keep them a little more orally interesting for you. Exercise one isolates the ta-da motion. It's actually nothing but that motion until the last 3 16 of each bar, where you'll play three alternated notes to cross over to the other hand. I'd say to think about smoothness throughout this exercise, and remember to keep those da strokes coming back up and you'll be on your way. Exercise two gets into a three note combination that I call ta-da pow, ta-da pow. You're gonna do the normal ta-da motion, followed by a single tap that has a little bit of extra emphasis on it to get that pow. That single tap's played with a bit of wrist and finger motion, especially as you tend to speed it up. Exercises three and four use the same concept, but explore five and seven note groupings. Let me know if you dig these exercises. We're doing like a hand separate thing in this video, but there are absolutely a ton of ways to start combining the hands both together using this technique. I'm planning on doing a series of lessons that break down how to use the open-close technique to play different rudiments. So let me know if there's anything in particular that you'd like to learn with this technique in mind.